number two, this skip. Coming to you live. Shout out to Real Six Aquatic Kennels. Welcome to part two of my video series explaining the science behind the different barred Midas species. And also, check out Hobo, Proud Papa, Fry, a now free swimming outside the borders of this clay pot. So we finally get to see these guys. And the funny thing about it, there's still quite a few inside the clay pot as well. They're just about ready for me to uh, start removing from this aquarium so that I can assure successful grow out because they are in a community grow out aquarium with other mitas. that may eat most of them, if not all of them, before they're able to grow into small baby one or two inch fish. As we find down here, check out Smoke and Miss Pearl, prepare to spawn once again. Both of them are sporting nice knuckle humps. I don't know why he's he's such a guardian. He's he's so territorial and protective of his lady, Miss Pearl. So as we get closer to wrapping up this series, I want to touch on some definitions and meanings of some of the terms and words that I was using in part one so that we can move forward and have a better understanding of the message that I'm trying to convey to you guys about the barred mitre species and variations complex. We're gonna start first with super species then we're going to continue on into DNA and then evolution. And then I think I may want to touch on another barb mite species that I didn't cover in part one from Lake Hilo. And then we can move on to closing part two and go on into part three, which is going to be awesome. I do have some surprises for you guys. here in part two and in part three. Also, I want to explain to you guys one of the reasons why I make these videos. Because I know some of you guys may have the misconception that I make these videos to influence other people's perspective on certain topics or what some of you guys may call brainwash people into believing everything that I believe is true or factual. And that's not the case. I make these videos to influence people to do research and have a mind of their own. And I make these videos to build healthy relationships with other people in this aquatic community. I want you guys to truly understand that. You gotta put in the work. You gotta put in the hard work to become a master breeder and to get to a level that you may feel that is comparable to your skill set within this hobby. One of the tools I use is science and the other tool is my influence in this hobby and my ability to get the point across grassroots style so that everyone can be on the same page. I want to give you guys 
a different perspective on certain topics so that you can get the big picture you can put all the pieces of the puzzles together like we're doing now in this video series so with that said let's start with Wikipedia's definition of super species and what does it mean Okay, let's check out Wikipedia's definition of super species. Super species. Noun. 1. A group of at least two more or less distinct species with approximately parapatric distributions. Okay, let's go over what is DNA. Let's go over the the definition and the meaning of DNA DNA is the instruction manual for how to build life from animals to plants to humans it defines us all Information is stored in DNA using four types of molecules, which come in pairs. We have billions of these pairs. DNA folds itself into paired packages called chromosomes, which are stored in the nucleus of cells. Each species has a different number of chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, which contain our genes. Genes act as instructions for molecules called proteins. In humans, genes vary in size, from a few hundred DNA bases to more than two million bases, and we have an estimated 20,000 to 25,000 of these genes passed during reproduction. Each person has two copies of each gene, one inherited from each parent, and most genes are the same in all people except for a small number of genes being slightly different. These small differences contribute to each person's unique physical characteristics, varying from height, color, and personality traits. Some genes are dominant and some are recessive. Dominant genes are more often expressed as observable characteristics, while recessive genes are often masked by dominant genes. The recessive genes are expressed when inherited from both parents.
as we take a look at my Saggy eating, and yes, I did say Saggy, Sagittate. This is a white variant Saggy. Yes, all Midas species or subspecies have the ability to peel. And what we mean by peel is change color. Go from black with balls to all white with no balls. That's what Sagittarius can do and that's what all Midas subspecies are capable of doing. So as we look at this Sagittarius, let's take a look at what is the definition of evolution. Because this process here is a part of evolution as well, an evolutionary change, but it's a fast track evolution. That's why this fish was able to peel and go from a black with ball color to this all white color. And the sages are very aggressive. So let's check it out. Also, as we check out my female Chancho from Lake Apollo, this is Sand coming up as she swim very aggressively towards the camera lens because I believe she's laying eggs right in the back of this flower pot. But I have no male in here to fertilize them. Let's touch on exactly what is evolution. What is evolution? The dictionary says that evolution is the process by which plants and animals change genetically over time. So what does that mean? Basically, evolution means change. Each animal is special and different from every other animal. Even two of the same kind of animal are different in some way. These differences happen because each animal has a special kind of code within its cells called genes. This code tells us how to grow, and it makes every animal a little bit different from her brothers and sisters. When a dinosaur lays 100 eggs, each baby dinosaur will have a special set of genes that makes her different from all the others. Some will have larger eyes or longer teeth. Some will have different colors. The babies get their genes from their parents, but none of them are exactly the same as their parents. Imagine that a hundred baby dinosaurs were born one year. 
Let's say that that same year, there were fewer leaves on the trees than in other years. That means that there wasn't enough food to feed all the baby dinosaurs. But some babies were born with longer necks. The dinosaurs with the longest necks would be able to reach leaves higher up on the tree. These babies would survive. The ones with the shorter necks would die. The long-necked dinosaurs would then grow up and have babies of their own. A long-necked mother would pass along her long neck genes to her babies. Over time, after many thousands of years and lots and lots of baby dinosaurs, the species would slowly change. This process is called natural selection. According to the theory of evolution, life on Earth began as tiny one-celled creatures living in the ocean. These creatures changed bit by bit into all the different creatures that are living here today fish, insects, lions, whales, monkeys, and human beings. A group of animals can change into a new species that, after thousands of years, is very different from its great-great-grandparents. The theory of evolution was invented by Charles Darwin in 1836. Darwin studied animals his entire life and traveled all over the world to look at different species. He noticed how a species might change in different environments. He wrote a book called The Origin of the Species. Darwin's ideas made many people angry because most people at the time believed that God created the universe and the earth and all of its animals in seven days. This is called creationism. Today, many people still believe that God created the earth, but most scientists will agree with Darwin's theory of evolution. Okay, aquatic community, I did not want to wrap part two of this video series up without you guys getting a good look at another Amphilopus species, the Heloensis bod species. Let's see if I can focus. focus here we go I don't want to leave any rocks unturned here's another one by Wim Hinges Look how similar this fish look to the Amarello. Almost identical in my opinion. Here's another one in a different color morph but displays the thick bars. See one, two, three, four, five. Big thick bars going down the body. Nice head indicative to a helo instance and <clears throat> excuse me and to Amarellos as well and there's another word that I haven't used much in this series and that is morphological changes morph meaning here's a helo as well but it peeled white I did mention to you when I showed you my Sagi that most mitis species have the ability. Here's one with showing bars down the body similar to Miss Pearl. But they have the ability to morph into an almost albino color or a yellowish the white hue or pinkish color from the barred pattern, color pattern. So I didn't want to leave that out.
And as I stated before, these are not my photos. I'm not claiming these photos. I am making these videos, including some video footage and photos from other authors for educational purposes only. I'm not gaining any profit or anything else from showing these other authors videos and photos. So I want to make that clear. I want to make that disclaimer as much as possible throughout this video series so that no one would think that I am including information or pictures or materials from them with, with the intentions on taking credit for it. That is not my intention whatsoever. Okay guys, here's another photo of a Heloensis pair with Fry. And one you can see with the bars and the other one has peeled. Some people would even consider this a hybrid or the offspring hybrids because they're two different variations of the same species. They have a thing that's called species hybrid as well or a term that is used now in the scientific community where you can hybridize within the species. I disagree with that term. 100% disagree with it. I believe this is what I consider a cross line bred species, meaning they cross a line of variation of the same species to interbreed. And I would touch on that subject in another video series when we talk about the difference between hybrids, line, line breeds, cross breeds, and things of that nature. You gotta remember people, we are a society that believe in ideological beliefs. Such as if I was to ask you this question, what large cat is the king of the jungle? The majority of you guys will say a lion. But technically speaking, factually speaking, that is not true. Lions, majority of lions live in the African plain. And that's where they, their throne is. They don't stay in jungles. They don't live in jungles. Tigers do. So technically speaking, or factually speaking, a tiger would be really considered the king of the jungle, not a lion. But when you go through generations and years of people spreading ideological beliefs, it tends to sometimes hold true in some cases to some people. But the truth is vague, people. The facts are not. Wasn't that just awesome? I told you guys, part two was going to be good. It was going to be better than part one. And part three will be just as good, if not better, as we go into closing. I have a surprise for you guys. There's a reason why I'm showing Big Eagle right now. Because we touched on evolution. We touched on morphing or morphological. We, we, we touched on that concept, how fish morph from one coloration or color pattern to another. And I wanted to let you guys in on a secret about Big Eagle. Big Eagle, as you can see, does not look or appear like your regular Midas orange miter so he's a little yellow he has a yellow hue tint to his body but he doesn't look like your normal orange or yellow miters or white miters for that that matter if you look at him closely he looks a little different and that's because Igor is a peel chancho people this is a real hard cichlids exclusive Eagle was once green like the female chancho I showed you earlier and for some reason peel and now we have the chancho that we have right before you I don't see too many people with peel chanchos I have seen some on YouTube but I don't even believe the people knew what they had in their possession 
because this is a rare condition with the chancho species but it's not rare with the Midas species complex all Midas have the ability to peel like I mentioned before when we were talking about the sag and my white sag so that's it for part two guys I can't wait for part three and I know some of you guys can't wait either so with that said this skip I'm out